Entropic recently released this PDF analysis feature. In this video, we're going to go through this feature in particular. I've found it very useful for a lot of day-to-day -day tasks that I work on using cloud. So here I'm logged into cloud and I have the professional plan. You probably need a paid plan, so you'll have to look into that. And once I have that, then there are all these different features that is available under cloud and you can preview them there. So there is analysis tool. This is more for analysis. Then there is latex rendering and then there is visual PDFs. This is the one that we're going to be testing out today. Visual PDFs is enabled here and give Cloud Superfast Sonnet the ability to view and analyze images, charts, and graphs found in PDFs in addition to text. And PDFs that are less than 100 pages are supported. So just keep that in mind. It has some limitations. I'm using cloud here because it's much easier to use here, but I do believe that the prompts that I'm using here can probably be easily integrated into their APIs as well. So if you're using the APIs, the same will apply. All right, so I'm gonna first upload a PDF that I have here. Let me upload that first. So this is the PDF and this PDF is a paper that recently was published and I shared this paper on Twitter as well. And this paper has, I think, around 35 pages. And it's a very interesting paper that recently came out that's talking about how to improve prompting results. So the paper that I'm talking about is this one right here, multi-expert prompting improves reliability, safety and usefulness of LLM. So this, uh, this is the idea here. So instead of using one expert to come up with an answer, you want to use multi-experts to address any query that you're asking the model. And what you will do is you aggregate those to come up with an answer. It's very typical to what a research process will look like. And so that's kind of the idea at the high level. So what we're going to do is we're going to take cloud and we're going to run some analysis on this research paper. So now we're in cloud and I'm going to start to prompt this model right here. So the first one I want to do is I want to see how cloud PDF analysis is interpreting figures. And I'm going to be switching over between cloud and this paper because I want to show you how cloud is performing at the different tasks. And the only way I can show you if the result makes sense is to go back to the paper and show you it. I'm going to paste some of the prompts that I'm using here just to make this video a little bit more concise to explain figure one and its implications. And then I'm just going to run this one here, right? So PDF analysis is already enabled, as you saw before. And so this is going to take a few seconds to run. Before we look at the results, I will take you back to the paper. So figure one in this paper will be this one right here. So this is figure one right here. So it's going to basically try to explain what's going on in the figure. And it's going to use the information. It's going to use the text and it's going to use this figure here. So this is what it gave me. It says from figure one, I'll analyze the key aspects and implications of multi-expert prompting compared to expert prompting. Expert prompting is another paper where they suggested the idea, but they are scaling this basically by proposing multi-expert. In the context of the question, it is ethical to eat meat. In fact, this is the question that's actually asked in the figure. So if we look at the paper here, you will see this is the exact question here. So that's really neat to see because if you really want to make Claude pay attention to specific details, he's already doing that. And then it says key components, expert prompting approach. It has it on the left side, okay, it uses a single expert. It has ethicist, that's one of the expert examples that was shown. Provides a one-sided view, concludes meat eating is unethical, dismissive of other valid perspectives, which is the idea of multi-expert prompting. And so you can see that it's teaching us already, right? It's explaining things, and this is a really good way to learn about the concepts explained in papers. The language model is trying to summarize things so that we can understand it. So the second part is a multi-expert prompting approach, right? So that's on the right-hand side incorporates multiple experts. So this right-hand side and left side here, I found it a bit strange. And that's because these models, while they have this image understanding capabilities, they're not so great with orientation or where exactly things are positioned. So you will see that the model makes some mistakes on that sometimes. And that's because of how it's processing these images. So keep that in mind. All right, so more details here. I'm not gonna go through all of that, but I think it's doing really well, at least for the explanations. Okay, you can see it's using ethicist nutritionist and environmentalist. These are the three agents, in fact, that were used in that figure as an example. And then it has some implications. I guess it's going to take this from the paper. So it's going to use the context of the paper and it's going to explain to you what are the implications, right? It's balanced decision making. These are the main advantages of the actual method. All right. So that's basically one nice feature already with the PDF analysis to explain figures and interpret these figures and understand and use the context as well to in this case get implications of the method. I will continue to follow up here with some more questions. So I'm going to ask it, summarize the top key two results from table one. I'm going to go here 
And what I'm testing for here is it, it can extract information from table one and then if it can make some interpretation of that. So it's basically about table understanding. So it says here, truthful KA performance improvement, and then there is factuality prompt error reduction. And I'm seeing that it actually is highlighting some of the results that appear on the table. So it's definitely using that information properly. Now, maybe we can pick one of these and then cross check whether it actually extracted the information correctly. Specifically with ChatGPT, multi expert prompting achieve 89.35% accuracy, beating the best baseline expert prompting 80.66 by 8.69. So let's look at these two numbers, 89.35 and 80.66, and if they appear in the paper. And that's table one. I'm going to go to table one here. That's bigger two. All right. So the main results are here. Multi-expert prompting. So you can see here how it's comparing with, and, and apparently this one is truthful QA. So I'm having the results here, 80.34. And then I have 87.15. Oh, sorry, this is ChatGPT, right? So I need to look at ChatGPT. That's really important. Even I made mistakes while looking at the table, right? There's so many different parts to this table and it has so many different dimensions. But it's looking at ChatGPT on truthful QA. So multi-expert prompting and proposed method is 89.35 and expert prompting 80.66, 89.35. I think this is correct. Let me verify 89.35. And you can see here 89.35. So that's accurate. I'm very happy with this result, especially because as you saw that table, it's a bit more complex than other tables you would see. It has a few dimensions and that's why I was testing this. And so you can keep testing the results. You can verify for yourself if those are correct. But that's the idea here with the table understanding. Table understanding is one of the capabilities with PDF analysis. So that's something you want to experiment with or any domain that you work on. Where I see a lot of mistakes with table understanding is usually when the model is not able to process the table correctly and it would confuse or mix different dimensions or mix different, for instance, columns. And sometimes it doesn't even get the numbers right. So that's another thing. And that's because maybe of how the PDF was processed. So PDF processing is a huge and very important task because sometimes you would say for instance here you might say 87 point something and then it's like wait there's no 87 and that's because probably it didn't pick up that number and so it's just making up that number so that's something that you want to test for right when you think about accuracy and the way the model is interpreting the information and what i heard from this announcement that Antrophic made is that they are processing these things as images so they have the ability to process that information more accurately in that way now i'm going to test something really simple here and this one is translate the abstract into spanish so it also has multilingual capabilities too which is really nice if your main language is another language though for instance i know spanish as well as i know english you know if i'm a spanish speaker and I prefer things in Spanish because I'll be able to understand it better that way, then this is really important. So I'm going to try that. And basically, it's going to try to translate the abstract into Spanish. Now, I know this paper because I already read it. It says, presentamos multi-expert prompting, indicaciones multi-experto, una nueva mejora de expert prompting diseñada para mejorar la generación de modelos de lenguaje grandes. And then down here is really nice because it says, okay, here is a note. I maintain technical terms like multi-expert prompting because there's no direct translation for those, right? You can see there, there are no technical terms are typically not translated and the translation maintains the academic tone while making the content accessible to Spanish speaking readers. I think this is really great and this is gonna be super helpful for folks that speak a specific language. In this case, I try Spanish, but I'm pretty sure he has support for the common languages at least. So do experiment with that. All right, so I'm gonna try something else that is about trying to find or locate information or discover some information. And this is typically what I do when I'm reading papers. And again, all of these things are really helpful, right? Like in different situations, I am going to be using these features to help me interpret and better analyze the paper results. And here I'm asking, can you find the multi-expert prompt template that was used? So they use this multi-expert prompt and to get a better understanding of this prompting technique, it's good to actually look at the template itself to see how it actually works. All right. So you can see here, it says, all right, yes, looking through the paper in section C5, page 20, it even gave me the page. It says it found a template with seven steps. Here is the exact prompt template. And then he even formatted really nicely here. And, and then I could pretty much take this and put this into my code, which is amazing because it already comes in the right format. Now I need to double check whether it's actually the right one. And so it says C.5. So I'm going to have to check that section there. And then it says, oh, this is a, uh, it's following this nominal group technique framework and it's designed to do all of these different things. And then it explains the different parts of it. And this is nice, right? Because now I can go directly and try to experiment with this. I just want to verify that it's the correct thing. So I'm going to maybe take a look at this first. All right. So it has expert one, expert two, expert three. So those are part of the initial prompt here in instructions. And then it's using like chain of thought, step one, step two, all of these different things. So these are the chain of thought. And then it even has explanation. Then 
some reasoning here about the steps and then the final answer. The basically it's a chain of thought template that's being used here, applying this particular framework. So let's check on C.5. This is the correct one. All right, so here it is. Multi-expert prompting, three experts. So and you can see here is the same structure. Then it took all of this and it looks pretty much the same. So basically it extracted this from this. You can see that I can select it. So that's nice to see that it actually picked this up and gave me the right format. And it put two of these together, which is really cool. It sort of understood that context, right? So that's basically the extracting and finding information, which works really nicely with this PDF analysis feature. These use cases are going to be about converting information from one format to another. That's also very useful, especially for this kind of documents. So these are some examples that I will be using here or testing. So list the main research questions, ask uh, the key findings for each, and then use JSON upward format. This will be nice for me because then I can save these into notes or you know, save it into whatever application that I'm using to save my research notes or whatever format I want, right? I'm using JSON as an example here. What we're really testing here is whether it can convert information from one format to another, and whether you can even extract that information. And as we do this, right, we're obviously learning about what the method is proposed in the paper. So it says here, research question one, can multi-expert prompting improve reliability and safety compared to existing methods? And these are the findings. So truthfulness, and then result, achieve state of the art, and then a factuality, significant reduction in hallucination errors. And it even gave me some details about the performance as well. And it told me where the evidence is, table one. This is so useful. And then it has research question two, then it goes through the same process again. You will see that it's still using that JSON format. So I won't actually check whether the format is completely correct, but it looks correct just at a glance here. All right, so that's really neat. And you can see it has four questions here. So that's kind of a really good way on how I study papers. Like I want to understand what were the main research questions and whether those were answered, what are the findings and so forth. So let's test another one along the same lines. And I'm just pasting the prompt here just to save time. Now, what are the authors saying about figure two? Please convert into JSON with the main points. Please also include source in the JSON, such as page, sections, or paragraph. So if it's extracting information, as we saw here with the evidence part, I want to be very explicit to the model that it needs to pick up certain types of information and like what's the source. So I'm going to go to enter here. And the idea with this particular prompt is that it's going to look at figure two. I want to see if it actually can make sense out of the context that it has access to as well. So it has access to the figures. It actually has access to the text as well, the full text of the paper and how it can use that information to answer queries like these. So it says figure two analysis. Figure 2 illustrates the main components of multi-expert prompting and responses generation and aggregating expert responses. So let's just quickly check that to make sure that's correct. All right, so that's figure 1, and this is figure 2. So you can see figure 2 has a lot more details. It actually is breaking down how this particular prompting framework works, right? So you have a question here. It's going to do experts and responses generation. So it has response generation. Then it says expert responses aggregation. So it has an aggregation step. And all the details of the aggregation steps are there, right? Step one, step two, and so forth. And then it says, so each one is explained in different sections. So for instance, this part, this first part here, is explained in 3.1. And the second part here is explained in 3.2. Now, if you have used these models like Gemini and so on for analysis, or even if you use the GPT models for this type of analysis, this is where these models actually struggle from my own experience. So like knowing the sections, getting the sections correct, again, it's because of how it's processing. Again, if it can make sense out of the information when it has it in context as well, right? Because obviously if it didn't process it correctly or it's not formatting things correctly, it'll make a lot of mistakes. But this is something I actually want to check. So this first part here is explaining 3.1. The second part with aggregation is explaining 3.2. And I think it mentioned that. So we can confirm it here. So it definitely is section 3, page 3. And then it says section 3.1, page 3. Right, So that will be the experts and responses generation, which is the first part of the framework. And then there is expert responses aggregation, which is section 3.2, page 3. Because that's something that I ask it for, right? The source. Source is really important. If I wanted to use this information maybe in another application, or maybe if I have this stored somewhere, or I'm viewing this in a dashboard or something like that, then that information will be key because that's how I go back to the source. That's really important. With any LLM application that you're building, that's where you can verify the results and the analysis and all the details the model was explaining. All right, so that looks good. I really like this. I think this is a pretty useful feature. And from my own test, it seems to be working really well. And that has to do again with how it's processing things. It's processing things much better. So the last one I'm gonna try here is summarize all the state-of-the-art results in a table and provide a source or figure table or chart. So this one is interesting because it's going to have to look at the entire context, 
the entire paper and it's going to have to summarize the key state-of-the-art results. Now, state-of-the-art, what does it mean? It's going to mean the top results, where the model actually outperform the others and where it's producing the best results for this particular a benchmark or a particular test that it ran. And that's really important, right? So researchers, they usually look at this. So let's say they wanted to find what is the state of the art for code generation? That's how they will look at it. And what I told it as well is summarize it in a table. So I'm actually asking it for a format as well. And so that's really neat because now we get it in a specific format. So if we wanted this in a JSON, we wanted this in whatever markdown, whatever you want, whatever format you want, you can tell it. And it's going to do that task really nicely. You can see here at the bottom. So this table looks really interesting. So it says the task data set, there were many data sets that were used. And it's giving me a preview essentially of what matters in this paper. It's telling me previous soda even the previous soda now for those of you that know i used to work on this papers to code project and basically this is what we were trying to do right we were doing these things you know extracting information from pdfs uh, what was the state of the art results extracting the state of the art results and we had this kind of pipelines really complex pipelines that would extract information like the state of the art results and we would have those results presented in papers with code, right? So if you click on each paper, you have the leaderboards and so forth. So all of this stuff is happening here automatically because I just prompted them all this way. I mean, this is a very convenient way to check for the results of a paper and present them in a nice way where I can actually you know, understand better what this particular paper is actually proposing and what's the big deal about it, right? So you can see here the comparison between the results, which is really nice. It even gave me this, which is a nice thing because that's the citation. And it told me here, this is the other method. And this one, it didn't find any information about that, but it does have information about this. So it has the win rate. That's really cool because it's not making up information if it didn't find any. And then it says, what's the improvement? So for this one, it's plus 1.38, better error reduction. So just in case the author forgot to summarize things, I think this is a very neat way to sort of derive conclusions or derive explanations to certain results. Because sometimes like authors forget to do that really well. Like I've noticed some researchers, when they interpret their own results, they miss certain things. And then I have a lot of questions. And then I could use this model to explain things and see if the model actually makes sense. The model might be able to pick up information because it has everything in context. And so that's kind of what I was testing here. And it even has a source, which is really neat. I guess it came up with the source because I was asking for the source in context. Context, but this is typically something that you would want to explicitly prompt the model to generate. And the model that was used is here. And so this is nice, right? I can even convert this into something more visual as well. So there's another feature within Cloud that you can use. So it's this feature here called analysis tool. So then I can convert these numbers into some analysis tool. Now I will not do this in video. If you want to see that, please leave a comment below. If you have any ideas on what kind of prompts you want me to test, I'll, I'm happy to test the results. But if you'd like to see that, just let me know below in the comments and I'm happy to work on something. So that'll be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you all in the next one.